fishing freaks, fellow outdoorsmen, and anyone else just ready to go on an adventure, welcome to the channel. It is April of 2020 in these historic Corona quarantine times. Today's adventure video, and I do emphasize the word adventure, is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. Mystery Tackle Box is a company that is built for these times right now, where we are ordering everything online. During the lockdown, everyone's getting all of their stuff online, doing online shopping. MTB allows you to get a bundle of great baits in a box sent to your doorstep every month on a subscription basis. It is a surprise every time. Let's face it, everyone loves surprise. Prizes. They love unboxing new things and checking them out, playing around with them. And they have boxes for every kind of fishing level. If you want like elite style lures, if you want to go just basic, general, getting into things, they have every kind of box to fit your budget. And some of the lures I'm going to be fishing with today are coming out of one of the panfish species boxes. So there's a lot of different variety there. And what I find helpful is sometimes I get a lure that it's a new technique and maybe I'm not familiar with that technique and then I go and learn it and they actually provide videos and helpful tips to help you learn how to fish those exact new techniques. Anyway, great product, great service, great company, great people. But let me just say, if you want to get a discount, on your first box, link down in the description, use the code MONDO, they'll have you covered. Okay, so I have never used one of their panfish boxes. I've always used the Pro Box, you guys have seen me fish a ton of the bass stuff. So I thought I'd switch it up today because, first of all, look at me, I'm ready for adventure. I might as well be a forest ranger. In fact, I could be mistaken for one today. I have green pants on, I've got serious boots on, I just so happen to be ready for the forest. These are uncertain times, my friends, and there are a lot of boat ramps that have been closed, and there's just a lot of general access areas due to flooding, corona. It's hard to know where I can go and put my boat in right now uh, that's not really far away, and I won't be faced with a blocked boat ramp or a closed ramp. And I know for sure the lake that is closest to me Everything is closed. There is no one running around on the lake. And in fact, I, I can hear boat motors from my house. Normally, it has been silent here. And I have made some videos lately trying to just walk down to the lake and I'm being faced with snakes and there are tons of animals running around right now. It's great, it's fun. It's good times with the outdoors. I do hate snakes, but I love to fish. I am going stir crazy here and I will not be put off the water today. I'm going adventuring. Uh, farther into the woods to try to find a creek that is going to have some pan fish in it. So let me show you what I got rigged up and the plan for today's fishing. Just taking one rod, one reel today. Shout out to that guy. Thousand size reel, just pulled it up with six pound test fluoro. And I've got my little, uh, my little ultralight trout rod, my little Yampa. So I'm also going to be carrying a, uh, a bag. So I've got one of the money bags stuffed with all sorts of pan fish tackle, including the stuff that was in uh, the box that I got, the kit box. A lot of these lures that I've got in here are tiny, tiny, tiny. I've never used lures this small, y'all. And I'm gonna be starting out with one of those tiny jigs. I guess it would be like a 1 32nd ounce with a little indicator. So little indicator about a foot above. But I'm also gonna carry some little, some little niblets inside of my pack. I've got a stringer, because you just never know when you're gonna get that, that big sack of roux. I do also have some snacks and some green tea, just in case I feel like meditating out there. This is my hunting pack, so there's some various random items in there, obviously. I'm also gonna be carrying a machete, a knife and pliers, as you guys know, I always carry those things. And anything that can help us get through the woods to try to access these creeks. If we can actually get to the area that I want to go, I think we'll end up catching uh, some decent sized bluegill and maybe some other other species that are moving up right now uh, to try to spawn. <sighs> We're in the forest. We've escaped the wind. I'm right by the creek right now and the water is really high and I, I'm already seeing bluegill like just at the start of the trail. I just want to see how they respond. I haven't seen any big ones yet. I think the bigger ones are gonna be like way farther down, but I just wanna see if they'll respond to my little jig here. So stick that out there. Can you see that? Little tiny little thing right there, that indicator. Got one on it. Thinking about it. Oh, ah. Took it. 
these tiny little pink shrivelly dailies. First one landed. Ugh. Okay, putting that little little pink deal on the end definitely made the difference. Just your standard bluegill right there. Put it back. That'd be pretty hard to fillet. Let's just keep walking here. Ooh, bullfrogs. Mighty bullfrog. Oh gosh, got him, got him. There we go. That was right away, this green sunfish right there, a very small one. Very small green. Hot action right here. There's another one. Oh yeah, we found the hole. I think that was another greenie. This is the tiniest thing ever. Got it? Oh, come off. Okay, I'm gonna try one more cast up in there. My left side. Got him, got him. Splashing, caught on some bark. Little better. Still quite small, but a little better bluegill. Okay, this system is working, y'all. That is like, that is uh, dang near close to filleting. But I can hit this spot on my way back, so I'm gonna let this one go. See you, buddy. That is three so far, y'all. Just quick, like five minutes. So they like this little technique that I'm using. I'm gonna keep going downstream towards the main lake and see if I can get some bigger ones. Well, y'all, I must say, I have never seen it like this. It is so high. <coughs> but now what we're left with is, uh, well, maybe there's some fish up here. And this looks very fishy. It's normally just a trickle. There's a little bend right here in the creek, so it's gotta be a deep spot. Okay, nothing doing right there. It is so high right here. I'm gonna have to backtrack and try to find a way across the creek and then continue into the woods so we can get out closer to the main lake. Huge trees sitting there. I fished right around the bases of them. Nothing. There ought to be gills just loaded under there, under that tree, but there's not. It's currently looking at some shad that are swimming around in this little hole. This is crazy. I guess they're feeding on this floating deal right here. There's like a bunch of duckweed and different stuff and these shad are all the way up in this creek, way up here. So I just found a pathway across where I can keep going on the trails. I'm going with one of these tungsten widow makers. This is called Cadis Cane. It glows, I guess. I'm off trail right now and I'm pretty much just walking where the animals walk. This game trail, definitely gonna be some ticks, chiggers. Well, I've reached a point here where I can't cross, y'all. What is normally a tiny little trickle creek is so full and I can't get across. So I'm gonna trek back to where I saw a bunch of those fish at the, the head of the, the trail where there actually was a trail. I've been off trail for like an hour. You can see a bedding area right here. That is where a hog slept last night. And there are some bones right here. I'm gonna guess this is a hog. Good riddance. Been tearing up my yard lately. Little baby snake. Hey buddy. 
I can't tell if you're poisonous or not. You live today. Oh, got one on it. Come on now. Another one. Greeny. Greeny. That's four. Now stay low. That's the key. There's a big one in here somewhere. I saw a big shadow just flash under it. You gotta come out of this brush right here. That's it. Got him. Got him. It's up under that brush. Another greenie. That's five fish. Five fish while on quarantine on foot. Oh, I just love fishing, y'all. Trophy of the day right there. Go ahead. <sighs> bluegill do have the smell. They have it. Crappie, bluegill, and bass all have a similar smell. They're all in the same family of fishes. The uh, sunfish family, centrarchids, I believe. Centrarchidae. Centronillidae, got him, got him. On the long paws, a little better. A little better. Oh, there go. One more hole, one more sniff. Let's do it. The tiny, the tiniest of tinies. Oh, gonna get him. Got him. Wabam. Uh, literally like fish in a barrel. <laughs> I think the key is to stay low and to sneak up on a spot. I've noticed if I'm like high up on a ridge, looking down, it doesn't work. Oh gosh. They are just pounding this little jig. If I'm ever in a survival situation, I hope, I hope to have some of these jigs with me. <laughs> They are the perfect size for bluegill. An actual bluegill, you can barely get your little finger in their mouth. Beautiful little colors. If you look really hard at a bluegill, sometimes you'll see some gold and green, like fine dust fleck. I really like fishing that in a lure. Like a little green fleck or gold, purple. It represents bluegill really well. Okay, show and tell, over, put you back. It may be small, but it's still fun. Super aggressive. Actually, one more cast. Oh gosh, there's a bunch more. Yep. Yep. Getting bigger. I got hit three times right there before I caught that fish. I don't know how many this is now. This is like eight or nine. Good one, good one, good one, got him, got him, got him. Oh shoot, that's a good one. Oh man, there's there's more. There we go. There's a big greenie. Gotcha. Yahtzee. There we go. I think this is gonna be my last one. We have caught over 10 fish. I would keep these. Some of these bigger ones. If you've never had bluegill or sunfish species, especially little ones like this, wow, they are delicious. And I just got a new fryer, and I haven't showed you guys, and I'm super excited. I'll be doing that soon on my next catch and cook, but I feel good about myself. Discovered some fish on foot, figured out what they wanted, and uh, I had to walk five miles. <laughs> I ended up coming back to an area that I started in to catch most of the fish, but uh, you know, I've never been so happy to catch such a small fish. <laughs> but you get away. If any of y'all just want to have some fun and catch some bluegill, it doesn't take that much gear, but I'm going to recommend these little jig heads. And you can put whatever on them. You can put your little meal worms you know like a live bait or you can put your little you know i was using a uh, like a little crappie niblet you know after a long day's uh 
hiking in the woods. I like to come out here and I like to hang out with my chickens at my chicken run. During this quarantine, I will tell you, I've spent a lot of time in this chair right here watching the run. I am happy to report that no predators have been around the run in the last three or four days checking the cameras. So that's good. Bobcat has not shown its little furry nub tail. Stephanie even started calling me the chicken guy. I don't know how to read that. But if any of y'all do have backyard chickens, you know how fun they are. So let me take you inside and show you the flock. Rackley roosts where you can lay up and have a good time. I crack myself up. Oh, girls. They really want to come out here and free range. I usually let them free range for like an hour or so a day. But I'm happy to report they're starting to get along a little better now um, because the, the chicks are, are getting bigger and the hens, they still protest. You know, you'll hear them do all that. But it's really because these, these little guys are so flighty and so excited most of the time. They're sleepy right now. But I think they kind of stress them out too. They're like, what are these little toddlers doing in here? But here is our one of our barred rocks. Right here we had the one we didn't know if was gonna make it. That's a little Wayne dot, a little gold laced. We got our khaki Campbell, little duck back here. Still not sure if it's a boy or a girl. This little guy right here that looks like a bald eagle. That is a dorking. And if uh, you didn't know about dorkings, dorkings have five little toes instead of four. Every uh, every other chicken has three front toes and then they got a back one. And the dorkings have five. But the two little chickens that look like hawks, they are Easter eggers. You gonna drop a big deuce? Please do not. God, your talons, your talons are so big. This is my coolest chicken, y'all. This is Henny Penny. Henny Penny is basically like a dog. She'll follow me around. She comes when called. And if I'm giving other chickens in here attention and not her, she will literally fly up on my shoulder. She gets she gets a little pissed off. So that's why I picked her up because I thought she would calm her tone. But apparently you're still a little frosty. You're frosty about it. So I was supposed to be in California right now doing some bass fishing on the Delta, but obviously that got canceled. So I spent a lot of my time out here uh, and in here doing doing things to help my flock and hang out with, and it, I'm going crazy. If they don't find a vaccination soon, I'm just gonna have like, these are gonna become bald eagles. I'm gonna train hawks and eagles. Just obsessed with birds right now. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna put you down, Henny Penny. Those are my birds. I'm gonna leave y'all right here today. But I hope in your quarantine time, you are getting to go in the outdoors. Hopefully you live in a, a state where they let you do that. Uh, I think fishing and hunting has been deemed uh, an essential thing here in Texas. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure fishing and hunting is like considered some sort of hunting you know, gatherer type situation that it's, you know, you could be getting food for your family, which I do quite often. But don't you dare hit that golf course. You know what is a great idea? <sighs> Go fishing right now on the golf courses while they're shut down. Cause that's where some of the mega toads are living. Thank y'all for literally coming up the creek with me today. And if you want to stay tuned for more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit the black button for going through vast efforts to catch a fish. I'll see you back here soon on Lake Fort God channel. God bless you in tight lines. I think that's enough squawking y'all. Let's put on our special. Uh, this is the, the uh, M94 Turkey approved mask right here. This will block all uh, Corona germs when you're out in the turkey fields. Okay, now that we're safe, let's get out there and get them.